The U.S. government deeply regrets this incident. By July 1988, the Straits of Hormuz in the Persian Gulf had become a shooting gallery for shipping caught up in the war between Iran and Iraq. For six years, ships had been attacked by both sides. The principal targets, super tankers carrying oil from the Gulf. When Iran increased its attacks, the United States moved in strength to protect the international waterway. We were there to protect US national interests. We escorted tanker convoys in and out of the Gulf. There was no question about it, no, no hesitancy on our part to do that, to fulfill the mission. Early in the morning of the 3rd of July, 1988, the USS Vincennes moved into the Persian Gulf. It was the most advanced missile cruiser in the US Navy, equipped with Aegis, a system which allowed the ship to deal with hundreds of incoming targets at the same time. The Vincennes Combat Information Center was its brain. This was a sophisticated ship designed to protect a surface fleet from air attack. The idea of putting the Vincennes in the Gulf was, uh, was not something that everyone in the Navy was comfortable with. It's a very crowded environment. So it's just crisscross with their traffic corridors. There are very few places you can go where you're not in one or near one uh, in the Persian Gulf. And that was not the optimal situation for that kind of ship. The Vincennes had only been in the Gulf for a few weeks. In that short time, it had already acquired something of a reputation. One of the lieutenants on the Nicholas uh, told me that uh, they didn't think highly of the Vincennes and that the ship was considered uh, trigger happy, uh, sometimes referred to as the robo cruiser. We had heard terms like robo cruiser and things like that, but uh, that didn't mean much to us at the time. The captain of the Vincennes, Will Rogers, was seen as a man hungry for action and on the fast track to the coveted rank of Admiral. We remain alert and we'll stay alert. Uh, but at the same time, I don't want to uh, uh, ever give the impression that we're leaning forward on our toes to, uh, to get a major conflagration start here. That's not the case at all. The main danger to regular Gulf shipping came from lightly armed Iranian Revolutionary Guard speedboats known as bog hammers. These bog hammers also carried a rack of rocket launchers on their bows called Katusha rockets. And those are basically uh, dumb rockets. They're like a, a firecracker. They have a warhead. They have no guidance system. They're just a ballistic projectile once you fire them. Putting them on a boat is pretty stupid. What they were using them for, they'd go up beside these super tankers, get real close and fire a couple of these small rockets and it would hit the ship, you know, burn the paint off, maybe put a little hole in it, but really not do much damage. It was harassment. Uh, so they weren't really a threat to us. Pound for pound and throw weight for throw weight, there really isn't any comparison. But I, I think when you, you have to take things into the context of what we have here in the Gulf, the fact that, uh, you know, small craft are always difficult targets, uh, a dedicated attack by anyone who wants to press it home is a difficult problem to deal with. Uh, regardless of the capabilities of the defender. Mines laid by the Iranians in the Gulf Sea lanes were considered the greatest danger to shipping. The Americans believed it was an Iranian mine which badly damaged one of their frigates. This provoked a major response from the USA and in their biggest surface naval action since World War II, the US targeted specific Iranian oil platforms and destroyed them. The operation was named Praying Mantis. U.S. naval forces sank half the Iranian Navy. Tension was high. When the USS Vincennes sailed west through the Straits of Hormuz, it was entering a war zone. The Persian Gulf has always been one of the most sensitive areas in the world. It's dominated by Iran, who, along with the state of Amman, controls the Straits of Hormuz, choke point of the world's oil supplies. As the Vincennes entered the Persian Gulf, the USS Montgomery was already on station. The USS Sides would enter the Straits shortly after. On board the Vincennes, there happened to be a Navy TV crew who were making an official history of the US involvement in the tanker war. The BBC has obtained both the original film of the incident 
and original sound recordings of radio communications. They provide unique witness to the build-up and shoot-down of a civilian airliner. Without a doubt, the Vincennes incident began uh, when the Karama Maris called for assistance on the night of July the 2nd. That led to a chain of events that ultimately ended in the Vincennes shooting down a commercial airliner. On July the 2nd, the Karama Maersk uh, was transiting the Straits of Hormuz and sent out a distress call. The Montgomery was the closest ship in the area, and we went to her aid. We did circle the Karama Maersk a number of times and identified a vessel and fired a warning shot. So it was the Montgomery which initiated the first action, not the state-of-the-art Vincennes. From other ships' perspectives, I'm sure it was very significant. Here, here you have an older uh, class of ship, a Knox-class frigate, one of the oldest in the line. And we're the ones that were the first to initiate action. We escorted the Karama Maris the remainder of the way out of the Persian Gulf. Um, the gunboats that we um, believed had harassed the Karama Maris were still in the area, and we did track... Uh, approximately 12 to 15 small contacts in the straits which we knew sooner or later would be back out in the shipping channels harassing uh, vessels again and they maintained a range of between five and ten miles behind us the entire time even after we met up with the Vincennes. The USS Sides, the third American warship in this story, a guided missile frigate, was re-entering the Persian Gulf. On the morning of um, July the 3rd, we were coming back through the Straits of Hormuz uh, on the way to pick up another ship for an Ernest Will escort mission. And um, there, was, uh, there was some radio communications indicating sounds of explosions or such coming from Montgomery and, uh, and, and Vincennes. The impression at the time was that these explosions were fairly large and not explainable uh, in the immediate vicinity. You know, in other words, there were no, there were no units that uh, you could attribute uh, this size of an explosion to. The explosions might have meant that some merchant ships could be in danger from Iranian bog hammers. So the Vincennes went to investigate, determined this time not to miss out on the chance of action. But even on the Montgomery itself, the explosions remain something of a mystery. At some point, and I'm not sure exactly when, um, the CIC officer did come to the bridge. I was on the bridge at the time as the junior officer of the deck and asked me if I heard several, con several explosions um, coming from somewhere in the distance, and I told him that I had heard nothing. Good morning. This is the Dal Dalgiri reply. When the Vincennes made contact with the Dalgiri, it required no assistance. Reports of explosions were baseless. German merchant Ulagari, this is U.S. Navy warship. We are standing by channel 16. Over. Uh, yeah, okay, 16. Uh, do you read me? <laughs> merchant Ulagari, this is U.S. Navy warship. We we'll need you loud and clear. Over. Okay, thank you. The Dalgiri and other merchant ships may have felt safe, but the Vincennes still saw the bog hammers as a threat. Radio messages from the Amani Navy warned off Iranian bog hammers from Amani waters. This is Omar Navy, Iranian Revolutionary Guard patrol boats, maneuvering at speed. Your actions are not in accordance with the rights of innocent passage. Leave Omani territorial waters immediately. Now, the Vincennes began to shadow the bog hammers. The Amanis considered this highly provocative and ordered Vincennes out of their territorial waters. This is U.S. Navy warship, over. Your actions in manoeuvring at speeds up to 300 knots in Omani waters are not in accordance with the rights of innocent passage. You to maintain a constant heading at leave Omani waters, over. United States Navy warship, uh, Roger, stand by. Left three degrees, Rover City, course 015 I'm Rover, left three degrees, come course 015. The Vincennes complied and left Omani waters. But contrary to instructions from the U.S. Surface Commander, it also moved to support the USS Montgomery, which was close to an active bog hammer group. 
I did not send the Vincennes to, to support the Montgomery. I sent, I authorized the Vincennes to send their helo. I was the only one that was in authority to send them anywhere, and my understanding was that they had asked permission to cover uh, the area with the helicopter and that they were also told to remain on station. The Vincennes helicopter, called sign Ocean Lord, was sent to monitor the bog hammers. We don't know how close to the boats the helicopter actually went. There was, without getting too technical, a fixed distance that they were supposed to maintain. Uh, if, in fact, they were harassing the boats, which may have been the case, how would the boats communicate with them? Well, they would generally fire warning shots. We'd seen that happen with news helicopters there in the past. If the news helicopters or the media helicopters got too close to Iranian uh, small boats, bog hammers, if you will, or whatever, um, warning shots uh, would be fired and had been fired in the past. I heard uh, what sounded to me like uh, machine gun fire uh, over my right shoulder, and I turned around and watched the helicopter fly back to the Vincennes from the general direction of the gunboats. Shortly thereafter, the Hilo reported taking shots, or I should say that the Vincennes reported to me that the Hilo had reported taking shots. Under the rules of engagement, the Vincennes could now engage with the Iranians. She contacted her surface commander in Bahrain. Were they warning shots or were they actually attacked? The helicopter wasn't hit after all, and the helicopter could escape the area at great speed, and in fact it did. So therefore, what was Vincennes up to in going to general quarters, accelerating to maximum speed, and heading off to those boats, which at the time presented no threat to anyone? The Vincennes took tactical control of the Montgomery. Um, we turned around, closed the contacts. Uh, Vincennes requested permission from the commanders in the Gulf uh, to engage the bog hammers. Um, the Iranian gunboats. The rules of engagement at the time uh, specified, and they and they were very clear cut that uh, you will return fire with fire, and uh, and so. Uh, uh, they, they asked permission to uh, take the units under fire. Uh, I gave permission and reported the same to Commander of Mideast Force. 75 kilometers away in Bandar Abbas, passengers were boarding Iran Air 655, a regular flight to Dubai. Cruising at maximum speed after the bog hammers, the Vincennes soon faced a potential problem. Officer deck, presently hold the ship, crossing the Iranian declared war zone line. Having crossed the Iranian war zone line into territorial waters, international law permitted the Vincennes to fire only in self defense. Do they have any guns on it? We did take the 12-mile limit seriously. Uh, everybody was uh, very concerned about it. Uh, incurring into uh, the 12-mile uh, limit was verboten. And uh, people were supposed to hold short of this 12-mile uh, limit by several miles to prevent that from happening. In fact, the Vincennes log shows that it had crossed into Iranian territorial waters over 10 times in the previous four weeks.